Hello and welcome to the CHAZ 3.0 Software Installation and Analysis Library File Setup. In this module we'll walk through a typical CHAZ 3.0 software and database installation and then after that we will set up the library files showing two different ways, one through the software and then one directly extracting the files into the library folder. We're going to walk through just a handful of slides on some background information. The first being the hardware requirements surrounding CHAZ 3.0. The top panel shows the recommended and minimum system requirements needed to install and run CHAZ 3.0 on your local laptop or workstation. The bottom panel shows the recommended system requirements and the minimum system requirements to install CHAZ 3.0 onto a server. Things to note are that you will need a 64-bit OS and Windows 7 or 8.1 operating system. CHAS 3.0 has discontinued the 32-bit browser-only options. With the addition of the database, we need a little bit more power, so we will be using the 64-bit operating system only. You need at least 5 gigabytes of free hard drive space in order to install the software, as well as at least 8 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum in order to install the software. You may notice some improved performance in terms of speed with the increased amount of RAM, so the recommended RAM is 16 gigabytes of RAM. This table is available also in the user guide which downloads with CHAS 3.0. The CHAS 3.0 installation now not only includes the browser but also the option of a database for querying and storing segment data as well as the annotations for those segments and some sample level annotations as well. And This is available for our Cytoscan arrays, Oncoscan, and SNP6 data. You have a couple different ways that you can set up the database. The first would be a single user setup in which you install the software and the database on your local machine and you'll be the only one querying it. There's also the option for a multi-user setup where you could install the software and database or just the database on a server or a workstation on a domain in which multiple users can access from their own local workstations. So what does that look like? On the top we have the single user setup where we have user 1 looking at their particular data, their segments, and they're querying the CHAS database that is on their local laptop. In the second panel, we have the multi-user setup, where there's a CHAS database that's central to these four users. Again, this CHAS database could be installed on another computer on the same domain or on a, a server which all four users have access to from their individual computers. And so you can see here again we have user 1 analyzing their particular data and querying the CHAS database to put annotation and calls with those segments. User 2 is looking at a different sample but querying the same central storage CHAS DB. A little bit of background information on CHAS 3.0. It supports the NetFX version NA33 analysis files for generation of chip files from Cytoscan and Oncoscan. If you've previously used NA32.3 or NA33 in CHAS 2.1, you now we now move to NA33 only in CHAS 3.0. You will notice a new NetFX genomic annotation version NA33.1 and this has updated DGV, OMIM, and RefSeq content. These three external resources, the data was pulled from October 2014. The genomic coordinates for this NetFX genomic annotation NA33.1 is still the same from the previous versions in NA32 to NA33. Something else new to CHAS 3.02 is that the single sample analysis pipeline has been moved or ported from our APT1 or our Affymetrix Power Tools 1 framework to a more updated APT2 framework. So this update to a higher precision algorithm allowed us to develop some new software features and analysis tools such as the non-diploid normalization algorithm that can be used for cancer samples on Cytoscan. 
Now this porting over also generates some small numerical differences in the data when compared to previous versions of the software. These small numerical differences are no more than you would see in technical replicates and are often just seen in the fourth or fifth, sixth decimal place. For more information on the difference and the, this porting from APT1 to APT2 can be found in a tech note that's available through support at affymetrics.com or by calling 888-DNA-CHIP. The reference model file for the NA33 analysis in CHAS 3.0 is equivalent to that of NA32.3 and NA33 from the earlier versions of CHAS, but it was regenerated using this new APT2 framework mentioned above. And if you have been using a custom reference model file, it also must be regenerated in CHAS 3.0. So upgrading from previous versions, if you have CHAS 1.0, 1.1, or 1.2 to 1.2.2, there is no upgrade path. Please remove all previous versions of the software using the Add Remove programs. Once you've, once you've removed the software, then you can proceed with the installation and setup. Upgrading from CHAS 2.0 or 2.1 is supported. You do not have to uninstall it through Add Remove programs. Simply run the, the CHAS 3.0 installer. If you are running CHAS 2.0, the installer will create a new library path in whichever drive you're installed on. Uh, I just have an X there, but for instance, the one we'll install on today is C. C, Affymetrix CHAS library. Any existing library files will be copied into an archive folder, which is a subfolder in this path, Affymetrix CHAS library. In CHAS 3.0, it is absolutely required to have new library files due to the new framework in APT2. All chip files though that were previously analyzed can still be viewed in CHAS. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go on to the software installation and walk through that as well as the analysis file setup. So on affymetrics.com website, if you go to the CHAS, so the chromosome analysis suite page and download the software, You'll get a zipped package with the installer that I have here, the CHAS 3.0 setup.exe. Also available on that page are the analysis files for each of the array type zipped up. So if you want to download the library files to be copied directly into the library file folder, you can do it here, but you can also download it through the software, which we'll demonstrate once we get the software installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on our setup executable. And now we see it's asking me, do I want to run the executable? Yes, I do. And so it's going to ask us a series of questions about the database we want to install and where we want to install it. So we're going to walk through each of those questions and what we, each one means and then proceed with the installation. I am doing an installation off a, a clean workstation, meaning it didn't previously have CHAS on it. So the typical installation, once we get through the questions, is about two minutes. If you are in upgrading from 2.0 to 2.1, it may take a little bit longer depending how many library files you have on the workstation that need to be copied over into the archive folder. All right, so we have the install shield, and next I am ready to continue. Now we have the license agreement, which you can read through. Once you've read through it and decide you can accept the terms, we click on uh, accept the terms, next. And now we get two options of what kind of setup we want. We can highlight the client, which is going to be installing the CHAS browser, as well as the CHAS database on my laptop. So that's the one I want to do today. You also do have the option if I was installing on a server where I didn't want the browser, I just want the database because I'm going to have multiple users which have the browser already on their, their laptops linking into the server. But today I'm going to do a the both, the browser and the database. So I'm going to highlight that and click Next. It's going to ask me which hard drive I want to install on. So I only have a C drive. If you have a partitioned computer and have a C drive and a D drive, you do want to select the drive that has the most space. A general rule of thumb for how big the data, how much space you need for the database is going to be for every thousand samples that you upload to ChasDB, you'll need about a gig of space. So I've selected C, I'm going to click Next. 
The default port is 6543. We do recommend that you use the default port. But if you try it and you're getting an error that this port is already in use, then please contact your IT department to see which ports are free on your workstation. I'm going to click Next. And now it's just letting me know, OK, it's about to be installed. Are you ready to proceed? Yes. And then the last screen is just telling me a quick summary on where everything's going to be installed, where the log files will be installed, where the uh, Postgres, which is the database folder, is going to be installed and which port we're using. So I'm good with that. Click Next. And now the installation is off and running. And again, it's about a couple minutes when it doesn't have any library files that it needs to copy over. All right, and as a last screen, we get a nice big red button reminding us that it is absolutely required to download new library files. So we agree, we say yes, I promise, I will download the new library files. So check the box, click Next, and we are finished. TAS 3.0 is now installed. So the next part of the setup is installing the library files. So first we'll show how to do it through the software, and then we'll show how to do it by just directly copying the analysis zip file package into the library file folder. So we'll go ahead and double click on our new CHAS icon. And as the software is launching, we will now be asked to select a user. This is similar to the previous versions of CHAS, and for those new to CHAS, this is helpful when having multiple users on the same workstation. Chaz has tables and graphs to where you can keep your own settings under your user profile. So when you log in and select your user profile, you'll know the tables and the graphs are the way that you like to see them. So I'm going to use my user login, say OK. And now the software is going to let me know I cannot launch unless you download library files and annotation files. So do you want to do that now? OK, yes, I will do that now. And it does give me a warning, it's not really an error, it's a warning that's saying, all right, Chaz is going to have to restart after you download the library files. In order for the browser to recognize the library files, we have to close it and reopen it. So, okay, that's fine. So now I put in my email address that I have registered on affymetrics.com so that I can download library files from the website. If you do not already have an account on affymetrics.com, you can simply click register now. This will take you to affymetrics.com where you can register for an account free of charge. So I click OK, and now it's going out to our NetEffect site and seeing which library files are available, or which array types are available for me to download library files for. So we have our Cytoscan files, Step 6, and Oncoscan. Simply check the box next to the array type or types that you would like to download. If I want Cytoscan and Oncoscan, I simply click those two check boxes and click download. Depending on your internet speed is how long the download will take, anywhere from a couple minutes to upwards of, of 10 or 15 minutes. So for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that and show you the other way to install library files. So from the Chromosome Analysis Suite web page, I downloaded the analysis files for the Cytoscan HD array. So I am simply going to go to my library folder, which is on my C drive, Affymetrics, Chaz, Library. For those who have used Chaz previously, you'll notice a new folder, which is called PostgreSQL. This is where your backups from the database will be placed. And you can see that in the uh, Chaz database tools module. So we'll go into the library folder. And now I'm going to bring my zip folder in here and extract the files here. So once all of the library files are extracted, I can go back to the browser, open it up, and you can see that the library files will be ready. And we are ready to go on to our next module where, we'll, we'll, where we will take cell files and create chip files. OK, all our library files are now extracted from our zip file. and are in the library folder. So I can get rid of the original zip and close our, our folder here. And now we're going to go back and relaunch the software by double clicking on our Chaz 3.0 icon. And we're going to get the same screen asking us which, which user profile we would like to select. So go ahead and select the one that you either newly created or one that you've used previously. 
and now the browser's opening and is loading the RevSeq track and the DGV track for all the, the annotations that we just downloaded. We're also going to be prompted to log in now to the CHAS database. The installer comes with a default username and password. That username is lowercase admin and the password is the same thing, lowercase admin. You can change the password or you can create additional roles with levels of security and in order to see how to do that please see the module entitled Chaz Database Tools. Okay, so we have had our library, library folder modified since we last logged in and the software is now installed. My library files are set up and I am ready to go. So the next module to view would be the one on analysis workflow and quality control. So this module is going to walk you through taking cell files and converting them to make chip files and also then reviewing the quality control for the array types. Thank you.